Hello and welcome to Tech Simplified TV. This is the fourth episode in the series based on interconnect in physical design. Today we will discuss about signal integrity and crosstalk. If you are interested, stay tuned till the end of the video. Now let's take a look at the pointers we are going to discuss in today's episode. First, what is signal integrity in physical design? Second, common signal integrity issues in PD. Third, what is crosstalk? Next, classification, rise and fall glitch. Then, classification over and under shoot glitch. Next, what impacts glitch? Range of safe and unsafe glitch. Crosstalk delay basics, negative crosstalk delay, then positive crosstalk delay, effects of crosstalk delay, crosstalk and RT level estimation, and finally mitigation methods of crosstalk. So let's move to the first slide. What is signal integrity in physical design? In digital electronics, a stream of binary data is transmitted as signal and it represented as voltage or current waveform. All signals are subject to noise, distortion and loss. In digital electronics, we use digital signals that is, this signal has two states, one is zero and one is one. And in any practical system, signals goes through noise, distortion and loss. Signal integrity is the measure of quality of a signal as it travels from one point to another point. So in signal integrity, what we discuss or what we measure is that in a practical and realistic world, when a signal travels in a system, how much its quality degrades within the system while it's traveling from one point to another point. So obviously, when we discuss signal integrity, we must consider the reasons which make quality of signal degrade. Now signal integrity is crucial as it ensures whether the data transmission is accurate, reliable and immune to unwanted effects such as noise, distortion and reflections. Now when we talk about digital electronics, actually not exactly a single voltage value is considered state 1 or single voltage value is considered as state 0. There is a band of voltage. If the voltage remain within this to this value, we will call it 0 state. And if it's above some certain value and below some certain value, that is another a band of values, we call it state 1. So, when a signal in a realistic world goes through this noise, distortion and reflections, so obviously its value gets changed. We must ensure how reliable the data is transmitted. Suppose due to impact of noise or distortion, value gets decreased. If a state 1 is getting transmitted and then value degradation happens and it becomes below certain level, so after that it will not get considered as state 1, it will become state 0. So it's very important to understand, to analyze signal integrity issues to ensure quality of transmitted data. Now, if the signal faces above mentioned unwanted effect continuously, it can lead to erroneous data transmission. That which I have just mentioned about that. That continuously, if a signal get distorted, doesn't remain in the same state as we are transmitting. So, it's a diagram from driver. Signal is uh, sent and receiver will catch it by that time. This distortion, noise, distortion and reflection, these uh, can happen these three effects noise distortion and reflection this thing can affect in this part and when it go, goes to this receiver so maybe it, it might not reach in the voltage level it's desired here so these are the points we have covered this point what is signal integrity and why signal integrity is crucial and what will happen if some degradation happens so this is the ideal voltage Form. And in real world, it doesn't like that. No, neither it's so straight here. The signal integrity mainly deals with timing and quality of the signal. Whatever circuit and modules we design, it timing closure is there because we deal with sequential components in the circuit. So their performance is time dependent, depends on clock. So the signal get delayed, that timing violation occurs and quality of the signal, magnitude of the voltage that can differ from what is expected. 
Signal integrity is both an interconnect level problem as well as system level problem. Interconnect obviously signal integrity interconnect level problem because uh, there are so many issues comes from interconnect level. Interconnect level like crosstalk, ohmic voltage drop. These all comes from interconnect level. At the same time, it's system level problem also. Any design have some signal integrity problem and they generally do not interfere with the functionality of the system by creating excessive until the system deals with high frequency signal. So as we move to high frequency operation, the problem become more severe. No system is ideal. So signal integrity issues are there, but in a manageable amount distortions and noise are there that's why we define noise margin actually if this noise margin calculation is within the design uh, thing so people always design uh, keeping in mind about noise margin and all if it remains within the noise margin it will function that way because it's not an ideal system it's a real world system but whenever we are uh, at high frequency signals we are dealing with them that problem really interfere with the performance of the system High frequency state of art ICs are for them signal integrity issues are more severe. So let's move to the next slide. Common signal integrity issues in PD. In a digital system, signal integrity analysis are done at three levels. First logic level, second circuit level, third EM field level that is electromagnetic field level. In logic level analysis, so three level we do the analysis logic level circuit level and electromagnetic field level in logic level analysis signal integrity issues can be easily identified circuit level signal integrity analysis is based on interconnect modeling interconnect modeling we have discussed in previous one of our previous episode interconnect modeling and there we calculated delay due to interconnects and all here we try to model a piece of interconnect including resistive capacitive and inductive effect that is parasitic effect and impact of parasitics how the interconnects behave and all and at electromagnetic level, most of the signal integrity issues are reflection, crosstalk, ground bounds, etc. Reflection, we have talked about termination of transmission line and reflection. Crosstalk also we have discussed in the first episode of this series. A little bit today we will elaborate those points. And ground bounds, we have a separate episode on that. Link is provided in the description. Uh, both link of the video and link of the article in techsimplifiedtv.in so you can watch the video you can read the article this reflection issue crosstalk issue and ground bounds these are electromagnetic level issues now circuit level analysis obtain a good signal integrity solution at low frequency whereas for state of art ICs with small dimension and high operating frequency EM level analysis is more accurate to describe the effect since we have moved to more smaller dimension devices, so in state of art ICs which are operating at high frequency, for them analysis is basically a little bit tougher compared to the previous generation ICs. Now SPICE tools are used to check signal integrity in nodal analysis and they solve voltage and current in RLC circuit. So SPICE tools are used to check signal integrity in nodal analysis, circuit nodal analysis they do to check signal integrity issues and they solve equations in RLC circuit. So these are the major issues concerning signal integrity. One is crosstalk delay, crosstalk noise. Today we will discuss about these two and ringing and ground bounce ringing we discussed in last episode ground bounce. The link of both the video and article is provided in the description. Now IR or voltage drop in power line we mentioned about it in very first episode and electro migration we have separate three episodes link of video mentioned in the and finally manufacturing related issues that if not addressed can lead to chief failure that is antenna effect antenna effect on antenna effect also we have a video and article links are provided in the description box so today we will talk about these two so there are six effects now let's move to the next slide so what is crosstalk crosstalk is undesirable electrical interaction between two or more adjacent nets due to capacitive coupling Switching of signal in one net, which is called aggressor net, can interfere neighboring net, that is called victim net, due to coupling capacitance, this is called crosstalk. This one is aggressor net and this is victim net. Switching happening in this net. Switching happening in this net and 
that switching due to this coupling between these two net the coupling between these two nets state logic state of this net is changed due to this net so this is aggressor net and this is victim net aggressor is a net which creates impact on the other net victim is a net which impacted by aggressor and crosstalk has two effects crosstalk noise and crosstalk delay crosstalk noise or crosstalk glitch signal transition in aggressor causes a noise bump or glitch on victim net this is known as crosstalk noise crosstalk noise or glitch or bump occurs when aggressor net switches and the victim nets remain in a steady state so crosstalk noise or glitch occurs in victim net when victim net remain at steady state steady 0 or steady 1 and aggressor net is switching from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 Another is crosstalk delay or crosstalk delta delay. Signal transition in aggressor create delay in output transition of victim. This is known as crosstalk delay. Crosstalk delay occurs when both aggressor and victim net switch together. So we are done with this slide. Now let's move to the next slide. Now classification rise and fall glitch. We have discussed about crosstalk noise or glitch. Now let's see which kind of glitch happens when. Now rise glitch. This is the diagram. This is gate 1, gate 2. This is the aggressor net as mentioned. This is gate 3, gate 4. This is the victim net as mentioned here. Now this is the coupling capacitance be between these two nodes and this is aggressor node basically and this is victim node. And C1, these are capacitances by which this net is grounded. Victim net is at a steady low. Now this is the condition victim net is at the steady low. Its logic state is not changing. Aggressor net is switching low to high. High to low, so low to high. So output here, it is low to high. So gate 1, input is 1 to 0 and obviously gate 1 output will change because it's we can see it's a uh, not gate so 0 to 1 obviously a it's connected with the resistor so it's at node a the state will change from 0 to 1 and since this node v is at constant 0 and there is a mutual coupling capacitance between these two nodes so node a will try to change the state of victim net that is node v so node a at changing at 0 to 1 cm starts to get that is mutual capacitance starts to get charged output of gate 3 and node v at 0 leakage current through that coupling capacitance create a rise in voltage glitch at v so though it's at this point it's zero so if we measure voltage across this resistor Although it should be at zero state, there a glitch or spike or bump occurs. That is the rise glitch. Now comes fall glitch. At fall glitch, victim net is at steady high. Steady high at we can see and this aggressor net is switching high to low. So input it's low to high. So obviously here it will be high to low. So point A is high to low node A and at node V it's constant 1. Again output of gate 3 and node V at 1. Node A switches from 0 to 1 and node V at 1. Leakage current flow through CM from V to A. Previous case it was flowing from here to here. Now it's flowing from here to here and create fall in potential at V. Leakage current is flowing from this direction V to A. So although it should remain at constant or steady high one state voltage falls that is fall glitch. So we are done with the slide. Let's move to the next slide. Classification over and undershoot glitch. Well, overshoot glitch, victim net is at steady high and aggressor net is switching from low to high. So, when aggressor node is switching from low to high and victim is at zero, that is rise glitch. If victim is at steady zero, that is here at steady zero and aggressor is pulling it up, so there will be a glitch but that is not crossing the maximum allowable value, right? And when the aggression node is high to low, moving high to low and the victim is at steady one, that is fall glitch, this one. It was at high and then going down, pulling it down. So aggression net is pulling it down. So although it's within the range, 
what happens in overshoot glitch overshoot glitch is the aggressor is moving from low to high although the victim is at steady one so it it is already at steady one and if the aggressor net pull the voltage state of victim then from one if if it's move upward so it is crossing the maximum limit that is overshoot glitch overshooting and opposite happens while it's in in case of undershoot glitch victim net voltage is at steady low it's already in low and aggression net is switching from high to low so when it's moving from 1 to 0 it will pull down the victim net inducing undershoot glitch by taking the victim net voltage below its steady low it's even moving from below steady low below the allowable low so that is undershoot glitch so we are done with the slide let's move to the Next slide. What impacts glitch? Not all glitches are considered unsafe for circuit operation. Safe, unsafe decided by glitch height. Now, glitch magnitude or height of the glitch is determined by few factors such as value of coupling capacitance. Magnitude of glitch would be higher if the coupling capacitance value is higher. Slew of the aggression net. If the output drives slew means how fast this signal ideally we take like this but actually it doesn't happen it takes there is no instantaneous thing so it will be something like this and that this how fast this rate of change that is called slew so if that is very sharp then the the driver of the aggression net is really strong it has high driving strength so slew of a aggressor net defines how strong the driver of that net is if output drive strength of cell that is driving the aggression net is high slew of aggression net is faster the faster slew of aggression net results in high magnitude of glitch that means the aggression net is more powerful compared to the victim net more powerful uh, aggression net is it will impact more the glitch will be higher so drive strength of aggressor and victim net if driving strength of aggressor net is high the magnitude of glitch will be higher whereas if driving strength of victim net is higher it not easy to influence it it's a comparative one if victim net grounded capacitances are small then the magnitude of glitch will be large so these are basically four factors which impact the magnitude of the glitch introduced in victim net by aggression net now what will happen if multiple aggressors are present so when multiple aggressors are present and they switch concurrently the impact on victim net is get added suppose there are multiple aggressors multiple aggressor node are there they are impacting one victim net now concurrent switching is an ideal case all the nets are switching at the same time that's a ideal case in reality what happens uh, suppose there are four aggression net two switches one is switching and then after a few nanoseconds some other net is switching so for that time period any two or any three or multiple depending on the number of aggression net they are active suppose if that is the time suppose for one one aggression node is steady one then after some time one another one when before it's completely switched go to zero state another net is getting switched on so switching happens so in analysis of such situation what happens so the impact on victim net depends on the contribution of each aggression node on that victim net for a time window that time we will consider a uh, analysis depending on time window for which time window how many nets are active on that victim net or switching so depending on that get added in this case we do the analysis based on time window so we are done with this slide let's move to the next slide range of safe and unsafe glitch we said that not all glitches are unsafe some are safe also depends on magnitude so safe glitch has no effect on logic state or victim net glitch is there but it's not impacting so we'll not get bothered by it if glitch height is less than noise margin low nml a safe glitch so this is the noise margin low this is the range of nml and this is the range of nmh any glitch below this maximum this is the range of nml that is noise margin low we call it safe and here we can see that noise margin high level it has within that range it's obviously unsafe and this is potentially unsafe 
glitch height is greater than noise margin high unsafe glitch and if nml is less than glitch height less than nmh and unpredictable case this one potentially answer noise margin is a parameter that determines the allowable noise voltage on input without affecting output how much noise could be there in input so that it doesn't affect the output it's there but it's not impacting that's the noise margin so noise margin or basically immunity expressed in terms of noise margin low and noise margin high what is noise margin low that is vil minus vol that is difference in magnitude between the maximum low output voltage of driving gate and the maximum input low voltage recognized by the driven gate this is the driving gate and this is driving this driven gate so difference in magnitude between the maximum low output of this driving gate and the maximum input low voltage recognized by the drive driven gate this is the calculation and nmh is difference in magnitude between the minimum high output voltage of the driving gate and the minimum input high voltage recognized by the receiving gate this is this is the calculation so we will go by this one that the noise level must be within this safe zone so we are sorted as long as noise or the glitch above this line we are not really sorted there are reason to get worried and now let's move to the next slide now crosstalk delay basic till now we have talked about crosstalk noise now crosstalk delay crosstalk delay occurs when both aggressor and victim net switching so in case of crosstalk noise victim net was always at steady state it was not switching when both aggressor net and victim net they both are switching what will happen so that effect is crosstalk delay and uh, that analysis is crosstalk delay analysis crosstalk delay occurs when both aggressor and victim net switching and these may lead up to setup and hold timing violation it increase or decrease the delay of a cell depending upon the switching direction of aggressor and victim nets in case of crosstalk delay we will discuss about that uh, aggressor net which direction is going that is from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 and victim net 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 like same they are switching in same direction low to high or high to low or opposite like one is switching from 0 to 1 and another is from 1 to 0 that is high to low so we are done with this slide let's move to the next slide now negative crosstalk delay the small mistake this waveform is would be like this it is written properly but it's not so negative crosstalk aggressor and victim net switch in the same direction both net switches from low to high so here also it's 0 to 1 here also it's 0 to 1 there is a small mistake i have corrected this one if aggressor has higher driving strength transition will happen faster if this aggressor net is strong compared to victim net then its transition will happen faster we are assuming that if aggressor net has more driving strength then this point will be at higher potential compared to v so node a will try to pull up the victim node transition of victim node will have a bump so it's moving otherwise without any interruption from aggressor node its transition should have like this now point a or node a is pulling the voltage or the logic state of this node v so it will pull it so here the voltage get pulled up and with its natural slew it would have been transition happen would have been at this zone this transition just happens before so there is a delta shift so actually victim net will reach from 0 to 1 earlier and transition time will decrease and crosstalk will decrease the delay by delta and the new delay will be d minus delta so usually it would happen like this it would have this transition time would have taken because of action of this aggressor net this transition is happening earlier by a small time window delta here crosstalk is actually decreasing the transition time of victim net so it's called negative crosstalk because it's reducing the time now we will move to positive crosstalk delay here aggressor and victim net switch in the opposite direction here it's 0 to 1 and this is moving from 1 to 0 yeah. here also a small mistake sorry i have not noticed it earlier <laughs> so here aggressor net and node a switches from 0 to 1 and node a will try to pull up node v v switches from 1 to 0 it was 1 and now it's moving to 0 so transition of victim node will have a bump it's without any interruption it would have been like this and since it's trying to pull it there will be a bump if there is no interruption it would have transitioned here it will reach 0 and since it's pulling up this victim net will reach 0 a little bit later that is is delta that is 
this delta time is added with the delay this is called d plus delta so it's actually increasing positive it's increasing the delay we are done with this slide now let's move to the next slide that is effects of crosstalk delay effect on clock tree crosstalk can unbalanced a balanced clock tree crosstalk delay can change the latency of balanced path and the clock tree become unbalanced suppose different branch of clock tree are they are balanced they will reach a perfectly time and some in one path and between one path delay is introduced so obviously its total timing it will not match with the other path so our balanced clock tree become imbalanced now effect on setup timing effect on setup timing for setup timing data should reach the capture flop be before the required time of capture flop there are two flip flop one is launch flip flop one is capture flip flop that is a launching clock path that is capture clock path and this is the common path so suppose here there are some sales and drivers are here we have shown that with one two three four and five six if delay is in include here and it's a positive delay so it will reach later if so for a setup timing the condition is that the data should reach at the capture flop before the required time of capture flop that flip flop should not wait data must flow from here to here so data is ready when clock reached the state will change and the uh, it will reflect here so if delta delay is positive delta delay introduced here it will reach later so there will setup violation can occur another one is if delay of this clock path reduced so it will be ready this clock is ready although data has not come here it's it will come its natural time and it's reduced so it will be there and the our prerequisite is that data should be present at here before the clock comes so there are two things one increase of delay in data path or launch clock path and decrease in delay on capture clock path the in these two cases setup timing violation can happen and now effect on hold timing for hold timing data must be stable for minimum amount of time after the clock's active age so hold for hold timing data must stay there so if decrease of delay in data path and launch clock if data this clock reduce this data path reduced and increase of delay in capture clock and this this clock comes later then hold violation can happen because for hold timing the data must be stable after clock's active age otherwise the flip flop give ambiguous data so this delay is reduced it's already reached there and this data path this clock is getting delayed this it's getting positive delay and it's getting negative delay so it will cause the decrease of delay in data path and launch clock and increase of delay in the capture clock will create the hold violation so this way crosstalk delay can impact setup timing and hold timing we are done with this slide now let's move to the next slide crosstalk and rt level estimation this is basically high level synthesis logic synthesis and physical level synthesis these are three level of abstraction used in this vlsi design methodology so here we will talk crosstalk and rt that is register transistor level estimation how we can do estimation at register transistor level and why should we think to do it because we are doing at physical design so each design stage has its own model for crosstalk trade offs exist between accuracy and complexity of this different model so more accurate it's more complex and time consuming also the cost involved in detecting errors and correcting them increases by a factor of 10 between each abstraction level as we move top down in asic design flow so as we move every step so the, the cost involved in correcting and detecting errors increases by 10 times so if we can detect any error or correction method or correct anything to correct at higher abstraction level then it's less expensive detecting crosstalk sensitivity at gate level 0 is 10 times more expensive than detecting at rt level some level parameters have direct impact on crosstalk noise problem and those cannot be accurately determined at higher abstraction level such parameters are the position of model models relative to one another can be determined after floor planning so we cannot assume it at behavioral level then only from floor planning we can assume that so another is the route of each where that can be determined after floor planning only we can only determine it at behavioral model we cannot do it 
the aggressor of a given wear in both the horizontal and vertical planes can be determined after floor planning. So, we cannot do at higher level of abstraction. Thus, high level crosstalk estimation includes mathematical and statistical process. And if we can do a little bit of our analysis at behavioral level, then it will be cost effective. It will be easier for us. There are so many research papers and uh, research theses are there and it's mostly based on statistical and mathematical methods. We will not talk about it detail because our concentration is only on crosstalk in PD. So we are just trying to give you a, an idea that with even existing models and methods, some researchers are always there to find a new way, making it more cost effective, more time effective. So we just to give an idea about that, we have introduced this slide. So we are done with this slide. Now let's move to the next slide. So mitigation methods of crosstalk, increasing the space between the aggressor and victim net if the distance between aggressor and victim nets is increased the mutual inductance or mutual capacitance between them will decrease insertion of shielding net inserting a net which is connected to vss vdd between critical aggressor and victim net is a method this new net between works as shield and this process is known as shielding Process of shielding stops direct coupling between aggressor and victim net and since the shielding net remain at constant potential, chances of crosstack is completely waved off. Upgrading drive strength of victim cell. If we upgrade the driving strength of victim cell, we, it will not be easy to change its logic state. Downgrading the driving strength of aggressor cell. If we downgrade the driving strength of aggressor cell, its impact on victim cell will decrease. Buffer insertion, insertion of buffer effectively boosts the victim net strength. Guard ring, guard ring in the substrate used to shield the analog circuitry from digital noise. So we are done with this slide. That's all we had for our today's episode that is signal integrity and crosstalk in physical design. We will conclude our episode here today. Thank you for watching up to this point if you have any question or query please put it as a comment don't forget to like share and subscribe if you have any dislike please put that also as a comment thank you again and bye for today